Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, hi, good evening everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our Cabinet uh, Broadcast. My name is Councillor Matthew Brown, I'm leader of Preston City Council. So today we're going to go through our Cabinet agenda. And again, this is I think the second virtual Cabinet, cabinet meeting that we've had on this cycle. Obviously we're meeting uh, online for the time being mainly due to the current coronavirus pandemic. Okay, so we've got a number of agenda items and obviously we'll have individual cabinet members that will uh, present them, but we need to do a few uh, important items before we get into that. So firstly, I need to read out an announcement and this might seem strange as we're, we're uh, obviously uh, meeting virtually, but I need to read out the following statements, which is meant to the public committee members and officers are reminded that under the openness of local government bodies regulations 2014. The press and public may film, audio and record, photograph and use social media while the meeting is in progress for part A items only. And as long as no disruptions caused to the meeting. So obviously you know, um, photographs and film can be taken by, by people who are watching this live stream on the internet. So we will be now to the declarations of interest. Can, can we receive any declarations of interest of our executive members, please. I believe, Councillor Kelly, you wish to declare an interest. Councillor Kelly? Sorry, it's in the, it's a uh, part B item, so I was told I declared in the uh, part B, or is that not correct? You, you, uh, Councillor Kelly, you will leave for, for that item, but you need to declare it at this stage, that, uh, not, not in terms of specifics, but in terms of uh, which item you declare an interest in. Uh, I'm declaring an interest in discretionary grant, uh, having had communication of uh, potential recipients of the grant. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Kelly. Uh, if there are any other declarations of interest, I presume not. Uh, Councillor Rawlington. Okay. No, I don't think you're at the message properly. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, if we now look at agenda item number three, record of decisions uh, on pages one to six of the Agenda item five. Can we confirm the record of decisions of cabinet held on the 24th of June 2020? Is it agreed that they are the third the record of the meeting that took place then? Yeah, I can confirm. Thank you very much, Councillor Bailey. Item number four, do you have any matters referred to the cabinet for reconsideration? None, Chair. Item number five, do you have any issues arising from the audience scrutiny, management committee, or task completion groups? No. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll move on to the substantive part of the agenda. Uh, we're expecting Council Henshaw, uh, hopefully later, she's going to be in a meeting to uh, present the report on homelessness by the task and finish group. But agenda item number six, we have the Chief of Preston's priorities and action. For this obviously uh, deals with our financial position, but also many of our ambitions uh, are based around our achieving Preston's priorities uh, plan. So I'll just pass over to Councillor Martin Robinson, who's a cabinet member for resources and performance, and take us through this item. So, Martin, over to you. Uh, I think, first of all, we must congratulate um, the team, the finance team, for putting such a complete report out. Uh, I don't think anyone would have blamed them if they'd uh, gone for a lighter version with everything that's going on. Um, it's, it's probably a bit later than usual, but um, it's still a, a significant report. Obviously, it tells us um, about the finances of the council, uh, especially for uh, the 
12 months up to April. Um, we have achieved uh, some savings in that time. Um, budget holders are still, uh, well, nailing budgets to the floor where they can. It's, it's a double-edged sword, of course. We, we still want to deliver all our services as efficiently and effectively as possible, but we are still in a position where we need to make savings. So um, it's a very difficult position. Uh, the budget is currently balanced. Uh, we're still looking at where COVID-19 takes us. We probably won't know uh, how much that will impact us for um, several months yet really. It's an ongoing, rapidly changing issue. Uh, even though we only locked down quite late in the last financial year, we did make some savings on fuel. There was increased plenty of income last year. That's almost certainly collapsed this year so far. So some good news, the capital, the capital program is, is uh, finally balanced again. And again, we're being very cautious on treasury management on our investments because of uh, the economy and Brexit, of course. And they are the major risks as we go forward, but there's still an awful lot of work to do to balance this council's budget in the longer term. We're fine at the moment. We do have balances and reserves, but they are really the only good news we do have. So it's uh, it's a fantastic report in itself, but there's there's obviously some major concerns going forward, and they're all being looked at. And we will know more at the mid-year report in October. I would hope. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Rawlings, for that excellent uh, contribution. I mean, yeah, we face some very difficult times in terms of the expectations government has put, has put on us to deal with the pandemic, in the community response, and a lot of other things that we deal with, and that obviously has a big impact on our budget. Obviously, we do other things as well as the council, like supporting our business community by offering rent rebates and other things, and these things don't come on the cheap. So. You know, in the long term, we really hope that as we emerge out of the pandemic, we're not going to be substantially disadvantaged by supporting the community through it. So, again, a big thank you to the team as well for the work we've done for putting this together. Are there any other comments or observations from cabinet members on this particular item? Okay, I'll take that as anyone satisfied. So, could I propose that we, uh, could I propose that we accept cabinet agenda item number six, which you would be priority? Is that good? Chair, um, there's just one amendment to, to that uh, report. On page 30, there's a typo which uh, members need to um, accept. On table one, uh, under the development line, uh, there's a figure of um, th minus three six five. That's a typo. It should be plus six. Right. So, are we okay to accept that? that uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. What we need to do is we need to approve the decision required, which is. Uh, it's on page one, which is that the cabinet is recommended to approve. It goes from A to F. The general fund outside expenditures quickly just sets out the attached GV Preston's priorities review of the 1920 document. The capital outturn and proposed capital finance that sets out in the documents attached. The Treasury, Treasury Management Annual Report and the actual credential indicator to set out the appendix B. The document back is quickly just slippage of budget into 2021 is this detailed in appendix C of the document attached. The transfer to general fund is many new reserves, any of our reserves are set out in the document attached. A note F, which is the performance indicator set out in appendix F in the document attached. So can we agree to all of that as well as the amendments that have been out? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
dengan berpendapat tiga. Sampai pagi lagi. Okay, we now move on to agenda item number seven, which is report by the task and finish group on August first. Do we have Councillor Henshaw with us? Not yet, Chair. Um, we're not expecting it till the earliest quarter past five, so if we could delay that report. Okay, so we'll move on to agenda item number eight, which is to introduce the group for entry onto the self build and build rest. So this is Council. So, over to you, Councillor Thank you, Chair. Um, purpose of the report is to seek approval for the introduction of a fee uh, for applicants introduction on the self bill and custom bill register uh, to introduce an annual fee to remain on that register and then to delegate any powers and responsibilities under the self bill and custom house bill and act uh, to the Director of Development. Um, National planning guidance uh, advises local authorities can charge fees to those who wish to join or remain on the register, uh, but those fees must be proportionate, reflect genuine cost incurred, uh, and should not act as a deterrent for people to be entered on to, to the register. So we've tried to set an appropriate balance between ensuring that only people who are genuinely interested and are able to undertake uh, self-build self or custom built housing to project to apply to join the register. Uh, and, and not deterring those genuine uh, people to, to, to remain on it. So, um, as such, we're, we're proposing that a fee of £75 be charged for individuals or association of individuals to be placed on the register. Um, and that really just reflects the administrative cost in assessing the documentation submitted, processing the applications, and advising applicants at the outcome of the application and updating the register. And then we'll be charging a £25 annual fee for those who wish to remain on the register. So the decision required of Cabinet uh, is to approve a £75 application fee for entry onto the Council self build and custom bill register for a various period or parts of a base period and to take immediate effect on the applications. Approve a £25 annual fee to remain on the register to take effect for the next base period from October 2020 onwards and to delegate the powers and responsibilities under the self bill and custom bill house building act uh, 215 and any regulations made there under uh, accept the responsibility phase for the director of development thank you chair okay thank you very much council Ross. do you have any comments or observations on that report agenda item number eight okay are we okay to agree decision required is outlined by Council Moss is on page uh, 27 of the agenda. Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. So if you move on the agenda item number nine, which is utilisation of voluntary community based sector grants in 2020-2021. So Council Khan is coming to benefit communities and social justice system as well. So you want to take us through this one please? Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Yeah, this uh, report is to recommend the approval of the funding for 2020 and 2021 uh, for the VCFS, VCFS grant uh, for a total of 126,730. Uh, it's to continue to fund the three individual figures at the same allocation as in 2019 and 2020. To continue to use the agreed formula to fund the Two remaining consortiums as in 19 and 20, and instruct officers to conduct a consultation uh, for 2020 and 21 to review how grant funding is to be used, utilised moving forward. Uh, so it is really for the um, agreement to continue with the funding for 2021 and then look at how we move forward uh, with this uh, going beyond 21. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Carl. I'll just make a comment myself, just in the sense that it's obviously, you know, we've had austerity as an authority for the last uh, number of years, and the fact we managed to keep this funding going and supporting the, uh, you know, the, the, the sector around financial inclusion, especially, I just think it's been 
tremendous and it's really helped lots of families and communities uh, you know, in the last few years. So I'm really pleased that despite shrinking budgets, despite the uh, financial issues that we do have, that we're actually being able to continue doing this for example. So I think that we need to talk about what we're doing going forward uh, strategically. So uh, do you have any other comments or observations on this particular article in France and Dark? Okay, if you don't mind me, what we'll do is I'll just, uh, I'll just read out the decision required, which is that Cabinet is recommended to approve the funding arrangements in 2021 and set out below, which is continue to fund the three individual bidders. The same allocation is in 2019 20. continue to use the group formula to fund the two remaining sort here, is in 2019 20. And it's short offices to conduct a consultation in 2021 to you have had funding needs to be utilised moving forward. Um, any final comments before we'll I put back to the cabinet? Okay, is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, agenda item number 20 is uh, the, it's, it's, a, it's a report the amendments to the constitution following management restructuring. Now, Now obviously there's a member to the constitution of the management restructuring which took effect on the 1st of August 2020. The report was produced to uh, and agreed by Cabinet on the 24th of June 2020. Members will recall that this was one of our, our first virtual meetings and due to the unfortunate all the sides, um, the meeting had to be reconvened to consider this agenda item. Therefore, in the interest of openness and transparency, we saw who did to bring this cabinet back to this report back to cabinet, simply reaffirmed the decision was taken by the cabinet. Can I ask all members present to signify their acceptance? Is that agreed? Agreed. 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 So, Councillor Robinson, against one of yours, so you want to take us through this, uh, this, 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 this agenda right, which deals with the Management should amend the constitution appropriately. Um, Chair, I, I believe uh, that there isn't a need for that. You, uh, the, the purpose was to to make the um, reaffirmation, which you've done. So um, that concludes that item, Chair. Well, thank you very much. I mean, if Martin, Martin does, um, which is commented, more than welcome to. Him. I'm sure he'll be happy to take that on board. So. It's a very simple item, just so that the constitution reflects the uh, officer structure. There's no no real changes to anything. It's just renaming things and moving the delegations around to reflect um, the, the the new officer structure. Okay, thank you very much. Right, so the general item will be amended. It's the decision making plan. So. Chief Executive, do you want to take us through these items that we have that are coming forward in a few months? Thank you, Chair. I think the, the bulk of the report covers items that are long standing and some are on for the financial year to, to give officers the ability to bring reports when available and appropriate. Um, clearly, as members will be aware, the decision-making plan is updated regularly. And uh, in terms of new items that have been brought into the plan um, after the, the last meeting of Cabinet, if members refer to uh, page 98, um, the, uh, the item around um, Pavement cafe licenses um, is new delegation there, um, and the discretionary business grants uh, a new item there, chair, which uh, you uh, you have before you this evening. So uh, the rest of the, of the plan um, continues. Those are the items that uh, are added in. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Chief Executive, for that, that whole year. Obviously, we'll take those agenda items forward in the coming months. 
Right, I believe that Councillor Henshaw has joined the, uh, joined the Cabinet and joined the Broadcast. Is that correct? Yes, Chair. Uh, we've got Councillor Henshaw on there. Okay. Carol, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, to, to present this quite excellent report to deal with the, you know, the matters of homelessness within the, uh, within the city. And obviously, we've done some excellent work in uh, tackling homelessness, not just in the current pandemic, but before. You know, we've got some uh, interventions and multi-agency work working. So, very interested to hear the outcome of uh, the report that's been done by the task of finished with, because it's good that we actually scrutinise uh, the effectiveness of what we're doing. So, if you're ready, Carol, do you want to take us through this report? Um, yes, yeah, certainly. Um, I haven't actually done this before, <laughs> so as long as you're aware, I'm a, I'm a bit of a novice here. Um, so, first of all, it, it, it was a really good exercise for us to do. Um, and, and I think one of the one of the first things for me personally is is you do see a lot of people in the streets asking for money, and this is a totally different issue actually from our rough sleepers and our, our homeless people. Um, so I kind of I, I think that's the first sort of personal observation. Um, I don't know if you want this kind of observation really, um, but as you know, the, the aim of the study was to, to see um, what our council officers were doing to help tackle the issue from prevention to actually um, not, you know, the ultimate aim would be to have nobody homeless or homeless sleeping, you know, that, that's the ultimate aim. So throughout the study, all the people that we interviewed, um, you know, from public health, to our own housing advisory service team, and um, you know they are all working incredibly hard. This is such a a, um, a multi-agency approach really that we have because there's people that are homeless or rough sleeping with such complex needs, whether it be mental health issues or drug addictions, you know, or, or just you know relationships that have broken down. So you know we we really did. Um, I believe, anyway, have a, a really good look at, at the whole of everything. Um, I think that one of the things that came out of the study is the, the, the lack of affordable single person um, housing options, um, which I, I from, from, from a recent experience um, with, with, with the planning side of things, you know, we, we have all these accommodations that are made, these, these lovely apartment blocks, and yet there's no affordable housing in there. So I think that this is something that we really should be looking at. You know, two big developments just, just recently with, with not an affordable unit amongst them. So that's definitely something that we need to be um, looking at further. Um, if you look at all the recommendations, um, you know we've we've covered everything from hospital discharge to um, resettlement um, for offenders, and um, you know for developing maybe, well eviction protocols. I'm just quickly glancing at it again now. Um, but the team really do seem to work very hard, and and as I sort of voiced last night, it's. It, it's extraordinary that it takes a pandemic to get everybody off the streets and into accommodation. Um, but also really good that at, at the moment all the people that were um, offered accommodation in, in the different places, with, um, the, the Purple Room for instance in Leyland, um, they are not in the same accommodation. I think I think the weed has told me, and I'm, I'm sure that that um, Council Card can just update us on that. But but you know nobody's back out on the street. So we've also got charities that we we looked at from Emmaus and the work that they do um, to to um, Millbank for um, women and children. So we do seem to do an awful lot. But yeah, there's definitely more that we could do. Is this the sort of report that you wanted from me? Sorry, having not done one of these before. No, it's good to hear you, Carol. Let's just continue. Um, well, 
as, as I think I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit more from Councillor Khan about where we're up to now, sort of post COVID, if that's okay. Um, and I don't honestly know what we can do around the, the planning and getting more accommodation, more single person units, but I suppose that would be a question for Peter. Um, yeah, as, uh, uh, any questions? Yeah, I mean, if I, if I let uh, Louisa pick for me in a second, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the specific recommendations for Cabinet, and obviously there are some good things in there which we need to look at implement. In, in the, I mean, quite interested in number seven, to work with registered providers to assess where affordability criteria and a challenge for program. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Is that the, uh, we want to look at supporting providers to potential for social rents instead of affordable rents, is that something separate to that? Go on, let me just find that, I'm sorry, let me look at the same thing as you. It's on page, page, page 11. Thank you, we're getting there slowly. <laughs> uh, Right, sorry. So which, which one? Number eight? Or? Number seven, Gary, number seven. Oh, I thought it'd gone to page 11. I think it's gone to page 17. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, my. It's, it's, it's page 11, it's, it's number four, it's actually page 11 in the, in the cabinet. Right, I'm sorry, I've got it, I'm awfully sorry. Right, okay. page 11, number four, promote the duty to refer with all partner agencies. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so what, what's your question on this? This is something that's going to have to be ongoing. Um, it was, it, was, it was actually recommendation number seven to work with registered providers to assess their affordability criteria and challenge where appropriate. I just think that's potential. Right, oh, okay. I'm yeah. awfully sorry. Right, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely with you now. This, this is because we had reports about the community gateway assessments um, on, on people and, and affordability. So, for instance, um, single parents, three children, just bought a whole lot, whole new school uniform, then needs uh, rehoming or rehousing, goes to community gateway, says this is what I've got coming in, this is what I've going, got going out, and bearing in mind that three children's school uniforms on that, so there's definitely not enough money left for her to be able to show that she can afford a community gateway accommodation. That, that's the sort of thing that, that, that we need a little bit of, of help with because um, because it, it's thinking outside of the box and it's our registered providers need assistance we think to be able to think outside the box when appropriate so it, that that was one classic example and there are some housing officers at, at, at places like community gateway that, that don't think outside the box and don't help the the client think outside the box i mean the three school uniforms certainly don't even have to buy that every year, do you? Because, you know, your older children are going to stay the same size for a while unless they're boys and then they seem to uh, shoot up. But, you know, and it's certainly not a monthly payment. You certainly don't have to go out and buy a school uniform every month. So it's just that that, that kind of um, issue that, that we thought um, needed a little bit of, of looking at and assistance. Okay, fantastic. And just, just a final one for me. The uh, evictions protocol with all registered providers, I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? Because remember the days of the bedroom the packs, there were some providers in the North West that said we'll have an no evictions policy for people yeah. who, you know, affected by the bedroom tax. So, what I'm thinking about is obviously we've got lots of families under economic hardship and stress because of the pandemic, really. Yeah. And, and, you know, the government has said we can't evict tenants for the next months, haven't they? But that is going to come to an end at some point. But the fallout of what we've been through in the last yeah. few 
that is going to continue for years potentially. So I think absolutely, absolutely. A really good one to look at. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? One? It, it, it is. It's just um, everything that, that that you've just said, but but post uh, sorry pre COVID, um, some landlords seem to um, if if people don't have a secure housing contract, you know, it's all your community gateway tenants, they've all got a secure housing contract, but your private tenants haven't and, and private landlords can literally just throw people out within within a month's notice. Um, so if they think they can get somebody in who will be able to pay more, then that's what they do. So it, it is just sort of having a look at that and, and getting a and, and getting a proper protocol in place with all the all the providers in place and, and to ensure fairness, really. Fantastic, right? So what I'll do now is I'll pass on to, to Councillor Council Council, because obviously this covers a lot much of your work, doesn't it, Louise? So just your thought on, on the study. I know it's, it's been eighteen months in, in the work, hasn't it? So it's been a lot of people exploring this in great detail. So quite interesting in as a portfolio holder, what you think about some of the recommendations and findings. Yeah. Um, Chair, before I speak, I think, um, did um, Ali Brown want to uh, she put in the chat box would like to speak? I don't know whether it's to do with this particular item. No, Chair, it was about um, the item uh, seven around the affordability criteria and challenging where appropriate. Um, I was just going to come in and, and uh, help Councillor Henshaw out, but um, she she found the page and, and knew what she was up to and understood completely what the issues are. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, uh, firstly, could I just thank um, Carol and uh, all the other uh, group members who actually undertook this study and all the work that was put in. Um, but it was very welcoming for them to get an insight uh, to the work that's been delivered uh, by the team around homelessness and what's sleeping, the challenges that um, they face, uh, not only resources and financial, but uh, just dealing with uh, this vulnerable group uh, itself. And um, so um, it, it was good to see that there was a reflection of that within the report um, and as Carol has commented on. Um, I mean, a lot of the study covered uh, pre-COVID and if, uh, as Carol's asked me, what's happened post-COVID, uh, well, you know, now we're in COVID and what the situation has been or is with the rough sleepers. Yes, they were accommodated. Um, the ministry had allocated uh, a certain amount of money to meet that specific and immediate emergency need uh, to get the sleepers off the streets and put them into any form of accommodation. And the accommodation that we had actually um, uh, provided uh, for our homeless and the sleepers was uh, hotel provision, uh, which was purple rooms. Um, which came at the cost every day. The cost was very, very high. Uh, we worked multi-agency with other um, housing providers at the time as well and voluntary organisations um, because these vulnerable groups also required um, meals three times a day as well. We then uh, moved into the phase of uh, uh, bringing them out to this particular accommodation when it was safe. Um, moving them into uh, appropriate where possible um, and this was a uh, one bedroom sort of studio type um, uh, provision of accommodation and it was called the box which was ex-university um, uh, apartment type and yes it's true this is the most suitable type of accommodation that would suit with sleepers or people that are homeless single people, they have very much complex needs which has been reflected in the report. Um, it's not just a one service or one organisation's uh, responsibility or they can meet those needs, it's a multi-agency approach that is required. Hence we're continuously affording 
and making new relationships and trying to find what is best to work around uh, it's like a team around the, the homeless or the sleeper uh, to have that wraparound service for them. The, where we are at today, um, we have got a number of sleepers that are coming back out on the streets. This is happening in all cities, it's not just in Preston. Uh, at least in Preston, we don't have a very high number. This is a choice that they have made. Some of them live county of life. You've got to understand their lifestyle, to understand where they are and what they do and why they choose to be uh, to have a preference to sleeping on the streets and being out there. Uh, because of the transient lifestyle, that's what they're being familiar with. They find it very difficult to live in uh, accommodation that's roofed. Um, we, we also have had, I can give you an example, where we had accommodation being provided, but then yet at the same time, uh, somebody has pitched a tent inside a room because that is what they're familiar with, that is being their lifestyle, very chaotic lifestyle. So we, we are now um, with, back with the ministry having discussions and looking at, uh, they've had lots of resource implications, we need a lot more money uh, to be able to go down more um, find a suitable accommodation for everybody and we are now sitting in a project uh, bid uh, where there's, there's a number of housing providers that have come on board with us, new housing providers, housing associations that want to work with us uh, to work with this vulnerable group and looking at accommodation uh, provision. Uh, so it's not just community gateway. Boston Centre, which is um, our main hub, is continuing to uh, work with all the rough sleepers, uh, we have an outreach team uh, that can, you know, go out and um, buy a side post on and bring them back into the Boston Centre. Because of COVID, there was only a, a particular number that we could accommodate, and that was around about eight, and we could not accommodate more than that. So those services are ongoing. Um, I just like to say that, you know, I'm going to applaud and give credit to all our officers who worked very, very hard and continue to do so. Uh, during this pandemic, um, uh, and as, as I said and stated, that it, it, you know the, the very complex individuals with complex needs, and we are doing our best and trying our best, and we do recognise that the one bedroom uh, provision or that type of home provision is the most suitable, uh, but then it comes down to resources as well. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I'll just finish it there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for for that very comprehensive update. Um, okay, uh, Council Moss, do you have any comments on this, this issue first before we fall within your portfolio and report in general and recommendations? No, not within this forum, Chair, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other comments from Council members on the reports in front of us? I'd just like to congratulate Carol on noting for this report. I think it's been excellent considering without being patronising, she's a relatively new council. I think she's done a very good report. Yeah, fantastic. So, I mean, Carol, before we, I don't know if there's any formal decision to take or apart from cabinet accepting the recommendations within the report. That's my understanding. Please tell me about regrets on officers. But is there anything finally you want to, want to say about the piece of work you shared from our painting? And um, no, but thank you very much, Robert, because <laughs> uh, I, I am very new at this. I still feel incredibly new at this, and uh, as, as, a, as a, a ward councillor, you have so many varied issues, don't you, to deal with. Um, but, I, still, yeah. I still feel new at this, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so, yeah, no, no, thank you, and, and yeah, I think we, we just want to sort of get that uh, the, the recommendations agreed, and then yeah, it, it will be ongoing. You know, with this, um, uh, a lot of the recommendations that will, will be reviewed in December, and you know, and ongoing. So yeah, this is an ongoing one. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Henshaw. Just one final final point from me is uh, there's been a submission by the LGA saying the council should be empowered both financially and in terms of. Uh, uh, the powers for local government to build a new generation of social housing. I think the 
you know, a lot of the stuff that we've deployed has been people who are vulnerable, who need special help, but I think generally we've got to deal with the lack of supply of social housing in that is country yeah. years. Um, you know, we need to be able to build council housing again, and that includes councils like us that have divested ourselves from the start because Yes, we do need expensive housing within the community, but we also got to realise that those who got through this pandemic and those who have um, put themselves at risk tend to be people on the weekends. So we've got to make sure that we support new social housing from them because they've really helped us as a community get through the pandemic. So, just a final point for me here, we've got to feel like something that we'll explore as an authority with others going forward in the coming months and years. So it's okay to accept the recommendations which are on page 11 of the report, which is uh, one to nine. I don't think there's any formal decision, but I just think we need to accept what has been uh, put to us from um, the study. Is that agreed? Yes, agreed. Okay. Any comments from the office team on this? I don't think so, Chair. Thank you for. Um Agreeing it, yeah, the, you know that all these uh, recommendations are, are tracked um, and uh, obviously uh, further updates can be provided to members. Thank you. Okay, we now have the date of the next meeting, which is going to take place on the 1st of September 2020. Uh, it seems a long time off, but I'm sure we're here before we know it. And obviously, as a council, we're going to be working hard to support our community in the, in the pandemic going forward. Obviously, we're under new restrictions and the public health of people in Preston and families in Preston will always be our main priority. Item number 30, consideration of representation subjects in respect of items 15, 16 and 17. Director of Corporate, Corporate Services, do you want to report on any representations we receive from the published notice of intention to consider the following items of business in private? There are none, Chair. Oh, okay, thank you very much, Stephen. Right, so we now need to move to the final three items of the Cabinet, uh, which are private and confidential. Uh, I need to read out a statement which will excuse to the press and public, which obviously will lead to an end this broadcast uh, very shortly. And the resolution is that the public be excluded from this meeting due to consideration of the following items of business on the grounds that there is likely to be disclosure of exempt information which is described in the paragraphs of Schedule 12A to the Local Rule Act 1972, which is specified against the headings to each item that in all the circumstances of the case, the public interest is maintaining the exemption, in maintaining the exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing it. So, can I ask that Cabinet or agree to support that following recommendation? Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Thank you very much, everyone. So this, this brings end to the public broadcast. All the people in tune in have found this of interest. Uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you next week. We've got a full council which is taking place on uh, next Thursday at 2, at 2 p.m. And then for that, we're installing uh, former council for Carl Crompton's in Old Man. So please come and tune into that if, if there's any interest in this. So I'll let the, the webcast now and we'll move to the second part of the agenda in short. Thank you very much.